we'll, we'll get on with it. So a huge welcome to Business Connect. Uh, great to see you all. Great to see our guys at the Northwest there. Uh, I think I can see, I definitely can see Steph. I believe Jess was there, Jürgen, Marty. So really great to see you all. Alex and David, of course. So uh, thank you so much. And Sydney CBD, I can see Hero and, and Doug and, and a whole heap of the guys. Is that you, Nicole, as well? Um, I'm looking at it in gallery view. So forgive me if I can't see everyone extremely clearly. Hey, thanks so much for jumping in uh, in this new format of how we're doing Business Connect. I was just explaining to the group here at the Southwest how we've, we're transitioning a community that's met exclusively online for the better part of three years, week after week. Uh, we're transitioning that to be uh, meeting in person. Uh, not exclusively, we wanna make sure that people have the opportunity to jump in online, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, can join from anywhere they might be at. Uh, for instance, I can see Deborah is on. Deborah was going to be joining the Sydney CBD, but ended up traveling and she's now jumped on online. So love to be able to do that. But uh, also excited about the prospect of not just tuning in to watch a screen, but off the back of that, having in-room discussions and building in-room relationships and connections. So uh, like I often say around these things, it's ho hopefully high value content, but uh, the desire would be that what people are getting out of the connection and community is what really brings, uh, I guess, a richness to their lives. So uh, excited about that and really good to see everyone. Now, I'm going to say a quick hello to Pete. Uh, Pete, good to see you, mate. Here. You're going to be sharing with us in just a moment's time. Do you want to just say hi? We'll make sure you're coming through all right. Yeah. Hey, guys. Good to be here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun, mate. Let me speak to switch to speaker view here that's that's a lot better hey you're looking good good at hd camera um mate look <laughs> if oh, they say with every professional camera that goes on you you gain 10 pounds and i think i've got four on me <laughs> <laughs> oh it's good mate that's good it's still uh still looking like a asian elvis so we love it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's a long that's a long-standing joke for anyone that's that's uh, about to cancel me. Um, so, and that's your joke, Pete. I'm just using your joke yeah. back at you. Um, yeah. Hey, the exciting thing about what we're doing now is we're obviously live to you, but we're going to be recording essentially a curriculum this morning that uh, not only our church is going to use. I was just obviously just explaining how. Uh, some of our Queensland crew, it's Daylight Saving. I see there are some crew on. So see Cliff there. G'day, Cliff. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Cliff, I uh, gave it a shout out in the email yesterday, but uh, launch, launching a book, mate, that uh, me and a lot of the guys have already pre-purchased. So excited for that. But um, a lot of the Queensland crew, 6.15 at the moment, or coming up to 6.20. Uh, we have Mick Stevens and others. They're going to be watching this tomorrow. So huge shout out to you, Mick, and your team there, Liam Glover uh, and other guys. Um, they're going to be running Business Connects on a Friday morning at 7 a.m. So part of the idea of recording the content was that each time we connect, we'll record 30 minutes or so of content that people can use. But as well as that, Pete, we were uh, looking to use this a, a lot more broadly across. Uh, I know you've got connections across a whole heap of different churches that are essentially going to white label this content and roll out Business Connects in their churches. So pretty awesome that uh, we're part of something here that's going to be an absolute blessing to business people across the kingdom. So, uh, mate, any, anything you'd just like to say on that quickly? Oh, look, I, just, I think the big thing is, is that like being a business leader as a Christian, it's not just important, it's essential. And, and I think that's what I just want to do is like for everyone to grow in their gift of leadership. And um, when you do that, it actually impacts so many people. So that's what we want to do is just give this away and hopefully that people just, you know, that old piece of being inspired and being equipped. Um, but a massive part is just to get people together and just get talking with each other, get communicating um, with each other. Uh, because, you know, so often when you're in leadership, by definition, it's lonely, uh, but you don't have to do it alone. And in terms of a testimony, I actually had a person who is a non-church goer. They heard a podcast that we did. Uh, they reached out. And uh, they just said, look, I just want to get going on my journey of leadership. And we're really just saying, look, my friends, they're my friends, but they're not really happy with me. Uh, you know, they're not genuinely happy. I said, look, you've just got to get into this business connect. And so here's someone that wouldn't have considered walking into church, 
but he's keen to join a Hillsong Business Connect. And I said, look, hey, it's Hillsong. That brand brings up some emotions. I don't want you to feel trapped or surprised, but just get in a room with good people that are generally happy for you that you can just share, you know, what is going on. They can pray for you and you can just really be with each other. And that person's keen to join. So I really, this is, I think what I encourage everyone is whatever we take on is to just give it away. Um, and uh, I was having a chat with um, Dr. Robbie Sonderaker, which I know many of us know and just sharing this um, now, but I was kind of asking him like, where is it? Like we get a lot of information, but there's less transformation. I said, look, what, what do you think some of the reasons are why so much of this is digested, but not implemented? And we're playing around with a couple of phrases where it could be communicated well. And, and, the, and the two words were community and accountability. And uh, when you hear that word accountability, you kind of think of the drill sergeant going, give me another 10. Um, but when it's in the context of community, your desire to get better is to help other people get better. And so, you know, I think just to encourage us, if this is, if there's anything that we gather that's been encouraging, just share it. And if you're in that small group, share it with someone, reach out to someone, pray for them, you know, really encourage us to get on the front foot, all of us, to just kind of give it away. And, and if we can do that, I really think we can make an impact together. Sounds so good, Pete. And yeah, mate, excited, excited for uh, everything that's coming up. Excited to have you share this morning. I think we'll just jump into it. So we want to make time uh, at sure. the end. I know online, uh, Anna's going to be hosting just 15, 10, 15 minutes worth of conversation off the back of this and in rooms before we need to leave. Hopefully we'll get a chance just to connect and, and speak a little bit. But the idea being that we'll put resource in people's hands that they can meet between these, we're calling them collective business connects. We meet once a month collectively across the board, but in between that locally, groups have the chance to meet and similar to, to how you just discussed, are able to, uh, able to go through some of this and hopefully in community, see this become a transformational work in us as we go about our businesses. And, and by the way, not exclusive for business people, anyone that's in the workplace, which is most of us, to be honest. Um, Look, you're obviously going to be doing this, just worth mentioning, you're going to be doing this as a as a recording. So when I hand you in a sec, on your end, you're, you're going to do it in such a way that you can chop out this recording. So you, you'll do a welcome and intro, introduce yourself again. So just saying that in case anyone, uh, just so people know what's going on. But mate, I'm going to hand straight to you, Pete. Excited for this, mate. Expectant. Uh, you shared just a little bit. I didn't want you to share too much. I hate watching... Uh, trailers of movies or because uh, it just gives like everything away I'm always I leave the room when my wife plays them and when you're sharing about what you wanted to share I was like yeah yeah it's good don't tell me too much because I'm excited <laughs> to uh excited to hear it in its entirety with everyone else so mate over to you uh take it however you'll take it I'm going to mute and we'll pick it up in half an hour or so epic guys well before the official recording starts uh, I'm so much a game that this is a brand new shirt and I've got my lucky rocket ship underwear on. So I'm feeling good. It's going to be a good time. Uh, I'm actually going to, we, we will start in prayer quickly and then we'll do the official start. Um, Andrew Denton, I know you're in Noosa. Uh, Technology is not your friend, but if you don't mind unmuting and uh, giving a quick prayer and then we'll kick into it. Yeah. Okay. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have to meet, Lord, across the country, Father, and for this recording, Lord, that it will, we pray, Father, that it will impact many people, Father, many people, Lord, across the country and across the world. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity now. Bless Pete, Father, and uh, we just pray that this will impact people this morning too. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's bring it on. Hey, well, absolutely. Greetings, whether you're looking at this live or you're looking at this at a recording. Uh, whether you're across a boardroom table or maybe better yet, a breakfast table, greetings and welcome to Business Connect. Business Connect is going to be a monthly gathering where we're going to provide 30 minutes of content and an accompanying worksheet designed to develop the leader within you. Now, ideally, you're looking at this in a small group because in a small group, you can go far. There's an old African proverb that I love to quote and I add on a little bit. And the first part goes like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And the bit I've tacked on at the end is this. If you want to go fast and far, go with kindred spirits. 
You know, so often in life, in leadership, we can feel alone. Uh, we can be misjudged. We can be aware of other people maybe taking our best intention and twisting it. Because when we're leading and when we're growing, we're pushing past the previously held boundaries that we've had. And that can be a bit rocky for friends and uh, even family that are around us. But although they want the best for us, there's something in this leadership mandate that they don't understand. And sometimes out of concern, they might fill you up with worry. So getting into a small group with kindred spirits that says, you know what, I've been there too. Uh, and I want to say that in this journey of leadership, it will be tough. And there's been plenty of moments where I've just been in the shower. You know, I don't have the strength to even get out. And I'm just going, God, help me get out today. And the only thing I can do is go, I'm just going to get the strength to walk out the door. And I can look back on those times and be immensely grateful for people in my life to go, you're going to be okay. I'm praying for you. To do this in a small group, don't do this alone. Um, would, would be the piece. So as a kingdom-minded business leader, you not only believe it's important, you're part in the body of Christ, you understand that it's absolutely essential. And that's what we want to pray for. My name's Peter Lowe, and I'm your host for Business Connect. Uh, tell you a little bit about my story, just so you've got some context of why I'm so passionate about this. Growing up, I've always been extremely good looking. Ah, kidding. Hey, I call myself the hot Asian. We've got to have a bit of fun. Hey, but growing up, I was always a passionate Christian and I was involved in leadership and preaching, uh, even worship leading. And if you're thinking, hey, that church must have been scraping at the bottom of the barrel for me to make the cut. Well, that's very mean and judgmental, but it's 100% true. But there was this I had this wonderful community, but I felt an undercurrent that if you're serious about, biz, um, about your faith, vocationally, the serious people about faith, you know what they did? They thought about going to Bible college or they thought about joining some parachurch organization. And that, that never quite clicked for me. I knew my lane was going to be different. And it was about that time that I went to a seminar where one of the speakers was a man called Wayne Cadero, and he founded and leads a church in Honolulu called New Hope. And he shared with me a lesson then that has made such an impact that it carries me today. And he said this, in life, there are two teachers. The first is experience, and the second is wisdom. You know, there's some things in life you've just got to experience. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain what it's like to be a parent. Uh, it's hard to explain some other things that you've just got to experience. But if you only rely on the teacher of experience, you can be guaranteed of two things. And the first is this. You will never experience enough to equip you for your God-given destiny you'll never experience enough to equip you for your God-given destiny. God sees more potential in you than you see in yourself. And if you just rely on experience, there's not going to be enough time to fulfill all that God has for you. With the second teacher of wisdom, we uncover the wisdom of the ages. We learn. Um, there's a hashtag in my mind I love, and that is this. The ancient paths bring new life. You know, there's amazing advances in technology and software um, and insights into the human mind, which are fantastic. But what about the ancient paths? God, show me the ancient paths. And there is so much wisdom from the ages we can get with the teacher of wisdom. And so with that in mind, as I walk my business journey, I was so hungry for mentorship, leadership, teachers, coaches, consultants. I would knock on doors with my book and pen, get meetings, ask questions, and I would write. Uh, I would listen. I wasn't defensive. I was so hungry for that knowledge as I pioneered that way. But when I finished the meetings, I would follow up either with a text or mail or some way of communication when I met them again to say, hey, this is what we talked about last time and this is what I've done since then. I was so hungry to let my mentors and teachers know 
that their time was not wasted on me. I didn't just have a coffee because I wanted information. I wanted absolute transformation. Um, and so sometimes I had spiritual mentors. Sometimes I had business coaches and teachers. And I was always trying to mesh it together in a way to say, what does it mean to be sold out for Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit? And you know what? Excellent at my craft. Excellent in business. Excellent at leadership. And I want to just suggest with you guys, that is the number one thing that you can bring is that excellence. And that is what becomes attractive. Um, quick story. My brother about 18 months ago, complaining of headaches. We don't know what's going on. And he's doing all these tests. And one day he's driving home. He blacks out, hits a telegraph pole, totals the car, breaks his ribs, breaks his hand. For the ambulance to get to him, they had to shut off the part of the electricity grid to get to him. They rush into hospital and they find all these tests. And they work out, this is what the brain surgeon says, I have never seen a cancer that size in the size of the brain. Now, we had the luxury of choosing our surgeon. When we were choosing our surgeon, I'm telling you, part of the interview process wasn't his faith. I wasn't, we weren't looking at the surgeons going, well, are you Christian, atheist, Muslim, or whatever piece? We are going, who is the most experienced brain surgeon in this area of the brain? Now, it's a good news story. It's a full recovery. It's an absolute miracle. The surgeon continues to say, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. People are going to be interested in engaging with us professionally when we're the best at our craft. And when they realize we're best at our craft, may we share the reasons why we're best at the craft is because we know that God has gifted us with business and leadership, that we want to hone that gift and we want to let that impact be, be felt. And I hope you can get the heart of this around what we're doing. And so now at 100X, we're trying to mesh this piece in to say, what does it mean to be sold out for Jesus and the best of our craft? And I hope you can feel that in this piece. I believe all of us have been called to amplify what we have, to live a life of multiplication. And, um, you know, I just want to just share one of my favorite teachings uh, that talk about this, and it's the parable of the talents. And in this story, there is a master, and he calls three of his servants, and he gives them different units of responsibility. To one, he gives five units of responsibility, to another two, and to another one. And then he goes away, and then those servants act in a certain way. The five resource person and the two talent person, it says at once they went to work and risked. And you know what? They doubled the investment. Five went to 10, and two went to four. And the one talent person, um, what did they do? They were fearful of losing. They were scared of losing. They thought, wow, this is all I'm going to get. And whatever I do, I don't want to give less, less back. And you know what? I'm going to be so careful. I'm going to bury and hide it. And they worked really hard at that. Um, and to show this just quickly in a diagram, I hope you can see this. There's a passage in that scripture. It says you, people were given the resources according to their ability. So the first person had the capacity to handle five. The second person had the capacity to handle two. But just for this example, I'm going to say three. You would know why. And the last person had the capacity to handle, competency to handle one. So this is my competency. And then God gave the talents according to their competency. So you're, you have capacity for five. I'm going to give you responsibility to look after five. You have the capacity, competency to handle three. I'm going to give you three and so far here. So resources matched competency. Um, and the capacity was they had, they could double. So 10, six, and two. This is what equity looks like. You're given what you can handle. 
And I want to say that God is a God of equity, not a God of equality. Because if God was a God of equality, he would have given out these nine resources equally. So instead of giving these out at five, three, and one, he would have given them out at three, three, three. Is this, I hope this is coming through. So imagine this, you had the competency to handle five talents, but you're given three. How are you feeling if that you have the capacity and the competency to handle more, but you're given three. You're feeling short-changed, aren't you? I can give me more. You're holding back on me. I, I can handle this. And so this person here is feeling short-changed. This person here has the competency for three, is given three, and they feel matched. This person has the competency to handle one, but he's given three. How are you feeling? You're feeling overwhelmed, right? I've, I've been given too much more than I can handle. So if we believe that God is a God of equity and we believe that God has only given you the things that you can handle, this is what this means. You never need to feel overwhelmed. And you never need to feel shortchanged. And so if you're facing a challenge right now and you're feeling overwhelmed, just hold your hands out, breathe deeply and say, God, you promise that you'll never let me be tested beyond what I can bear. You've only given me the influence that I can handle. Help me to step forward in that. And if some of you are feeling a little bit shortchanged, God, I'm so capable for more. Um, maybe sometimes our perspective might be short term and maybe God's perspective might be a little bit larger. Just encourage you to keep pressing in um, and he's doing something in you. You know, I remember one time I'd finished a client meeting, didn't go well, really needed it to go well. I've slumped onto the train and it wasn't even a holy prayer. It was just this gasp. And it was just like this, God, why is this so hard? And I distinctly had this feeling of God said, look out the window. And I was at the train station at St. Leonard's in Sydney. And I looked out the window and there was just this enormous, enormous pit and it went down and down and down and down and down because they were building the foundation for the new forum towers. And I distinctly remember God saying, because what I want to do in you is significant and the foundations need to go deep. So maybe some of you guys are in a hard time, but you know your destiny is big. God is working a foundation and I will, I will, he will never leave you disappointed. I know you will look back on these hard times and you will see that God had a perfect plan and a foundation that he built for you. So let's have the perspective of what God has got. I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope you're feeling the love, Bluetooth cuddles. Um, hey, in terms of this life of multiplication, so if this is the case, the question becomes, how do we multiply? How do we go from one to three? or three to five, or indeed, how do we 100x and go from five to 500? I want to share just three observations from this passage. I believe if you transformatively take this on board, it can lead to change. So observation number one, the little you have does not negate your responsibility to multiply. Sometimes our dreams may be so big. Sometimes we, we, we might have an awareness of what's required to get there. And we're so aware of what's needed that we talk more about the lack than we do our destiny. I don't have the resources. I don't have the education, the connections, or the money. And there's this old principle I teach when I coach, and it's this. You either have results or you have stories. Think about it. When you win, what do you say? You talk about the result. Woo! Boom. 
across the line, hottest Asian in the, in the room. But if you don't win, what do you do? You tell the stories of why you didn't win. And sometimes the reasons why we don't win become the loop. And what happens is like that loop, that story, it's not bad by itself, but those stories have a tendency to grow in a tree and create limiting beliefs. About a year ago, I met a couple called Jade and Rev. They met as missionaries in Indonesia. They finished their time there. They fell in love. They moved to Australia and they've got no money. And through different events, they acquired a food franchise. And the first store is going amazing and it's going so well that they buy a second store. And by the time I'm catching up with them, they're saying, we know how to do one store well, but the way we ran one store doesn't work across two. And we're thinking about selling this one store, thinking about shrinking back. And when I've met them, they've given me all the reasons why it can't work. We're missionaries. We don't know what we're doing. We've never been trained in business all the reasons why it's not going to work. And, you know, this is why they're telling me why they should go to one store. Now, without going through all the things they did, but we shared a particular strategy that they did. What I want to say where these guys are at just one year later, that store that they bought, the revenue now they get from that second store has more than tripled in the last year. These people that a year ago were saying, we're not business leaders, what are we going to do? Guess what? They were one of the inspirations of why this monthly business connect in terms of this content started. Because a year later, they've come to me and they've gone, God's given me enough and God's called me to share. They've gone back to regional Queensland and they've said, I just wrote down everyone who's in small business and I've already got more than a dozen names. Pete, would you like to come up and fly and just share with our group on one night? In a year, the person with the one talent wasn't called wicked and lazy because they had capacity for one talent. They weren't called wicked and lazy because they were given one talent. They were called wicked and lazy because they didn't invest. And um, a question I'd ask is, what does the word stewardship mean to you? And often in Christian circles, when you hear the word, we're called to be good stewards, they're meaning we need to be good managers, we need to be good protectors. And you know what? That is essential. It's a pretty good idea not to have the following strategy. Okay, we're a bit short on the budget. I'll tell you what, let's take the little money that we have and let's bet on black. You know, probably not a good way to grow your budget. So that's bad stewardship, right? We've got to manage and protect. But in this passage, stewardship is also what? We need to invest and multiply wicked and lazy. You buried it. You gave it back to me. You didn't invest and multiply. And so often we might be in a work context or a relationship context where we're in just management and protection mode. And there's nothing that we're doing to invest and multiply. And uh, in this piece of multiplication, we invest and multiply not for ourselves, but for others. If you multiply and it's about you, well, we're just going to be fat with consumption. But if we invest and multiply for others, well, we're going to be rich in contribution. And nothing's going to get you out of bed better than knowing that you've helped other people. So I'm just praying that for all of us, may be rich in contribution, may we drive to multiply. So number one, the little you have does not negate you to multiply. Number two, status quo is not an option. Comfort, predictability is not an option. You know, so often in life, we, we pray for breakthrough. We, we, we pray for something to just open up the floodgates of heaven. And I want to just, um, they're good prayers. But I believe that breakthrough starts with break you. And so often we want breakthrough to mean someone else to change, but we don't realize that breakthrough needs to start with break you. The Bible says, show me my offensive ways so I may present to you a heart of wisdom. There's something that needs to break in us. And I love that saying that 
Organisations don't change. Churches don't change. People do. And the first people that need to change are the leaders. You know, I was looking at a podcast with Mike Tyson and he was asked, hey, Mike, in a bad American accent, but hey, Mike, looking back, when were the best years of your life? And Mike, without skipping a beat, says, the best years of my life were the three years I spent in prison. People are like, what? What about the $30 million you got for one fight? What about the first time you became world champion? And he says, it means nothing if you don't have your peace, your stability, calmness in your soul. Something needed to break in Mike. He even says this now, I don't carry my mobile phone with me. My mobile phone represents my lower self. I know if I've got that, I'm going to be tempted to be distracted. Maybe I'll look at porn. I can't conquer the world if I can't conquer myself. And sometimes in life, we have too many distractions, too many other things going around that we could look at, that we could poke at. And Mike Tyson needed to be in an environment where he goes, no, I have to be forced to break me. I have to force to know solace. And I'm not, you know, I think that's a great lesson that when we think we've got more, that we can just do more. But as you get more, you actually need more discipline, not less discipline. And um, if you have an enemy and you do, what would be, you just think about this. If I was working against you, if there was something working against you, what would be the strategy to take you out? Now, for some, it might be the distraction of pornography or materialism, whatever it might be. But a great strategy I see the enemy do on Christian business leaders is this, options. I'm going to flood you with good options. I'm going to keep you distracted from absolutely what I've got you here for. And maybe in your group at the end, just talk about it to say, what are all the good things that you're doing? But you know what? They're actually distractions that need to be changed. So I hope that's a good one. Last one. Start small. Start now. Stay in rhythm. One of the most decorated army generals of all time in the United States Army was George Patton. And one of his famous quotes is this, an imperfect plan executed today is better than the perfect plan executed in a week. Let's just get going. In this passage of scripture, that five talent person and two talent person, it literally says the word at once, they went and risked and put things to work. And uh, I don't know, sometimes I get tempted to try and make things perfect, but just this piece, choose progress over perfection. See life as an opportunity to learn, make mistakes and have a laugh rather than to perform or look good on the outside. Get going. Um, be good rather than look good. Don't try and look smart. Let's be effective. Uh, and this applies to your personal leadership as well as applies to uh, whatever that you do. Think about the best versus the rest. If you believe that God has given something special to you, so many of us say that, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. God has, has preordained me. He's consecrated me. He's separate. We say these big lofty things where we believe that God wants the best for us but we act like the rest. What do I mean by that? Let's think about what does it take if you were trying to be the best tennis player in the world? You're going to try and get the best people around you. You're not going to try and get away with things. You're not going to say, oh, I'm going to wait till next year. You know, when I've got my mental game in a little bit more. If you believe you're the best and you're hungry for the best, you're going to go, who are the best people in my world? How do I start some more? How do I start now? How do I stay in rhythm? I'm going to do the things that aren't sophisticated just so I can start. Uh, and maybe in leadership and maybe in business. 
my previous company I ran was an IT company. We had the vendors willing to give us money to co-build certain digital assets. I'll say, look, we'll pay for half of your website, half of your digital funnel, if you build it according to these standards. And you know what? They're super good things. But we looked at it and go, it looks good. They'd get us on stage and go, look at all the great things we've done. But I'm going, we realized it wasn't going to be the most effective. I can just tell you one of our early strategies of sales, and it is not sophisticated. It doesn't sound smart. And it was hard yakka. We'd print off a bunch of pamphlets. We'd be in Sydney CBD. We'd go to the lobby of a high office tower. We'd just go ting. And we'd go to the top of the building and we would door knock. Do you think you're going to get many yeses? No. Read the side, no hawkers. Oh, we're not a hawker. You know, and getting kicked back and knocked all the time. It wasn't sophisticated. But it taught us things. It taught us to question what do we believe in and why. It wasn't sophisticated. Quick side note, one of those clients we door knocked, at that stage they had uh, 40 staff. They're now a publicly listed company uh, employing probably just around about 1,000 staff from a door knock. It didn't look good, didn't smell good, it didn't look smart, you know? Wasn't going around the barbecue. Hey, guess what I did today? I door knocked. But just to get off to go, let's, I just don't care how you look. Just get busy on what God wants to do in your life. So just recapping those three things. The little you have does not negate your responsibility to multiply. God wants a return. You are already rich. You are more fat with knowledge than you are with implementation. All of us are. And God wants a return. Number two, status quo is not an option. There are certain calls you get to make now that you don't get to make on your deathbed. You're never going to regret the efforts that you've made to move forward, but you'll always regret that you played safe. The third one, start small, start now stay in rhythm. So as I hope that is helpful. And as you chat about this in groups, maybe you just want to share what's one thing that was helpful for you. Um, and what's one thing you're practically going to do? Perspiration always has to follow inspiration. So maybe with your group leaders, you're going to share to go, look, this is one thing that was inspiring for me. This is one thing that I'm going to commit to do. You block it off your calendar. Maybe your group leader is going to take a note of that. And next month, when you come back together, and you hang out for coffee before or after, just share how'd you go on what happened last month. Uh, every time we release this resource, there's going to be an accompany worksheet. It's a little bit different to what else is going around there. Um, and if you want that accompany worksheet, go to your facilitator. Uh, they'll give this resource to you and you'll be able to work that in at a later time. Uh, and second thing is this, if you want to get that directly off us or find other resources, we're 100x legacy. You can find us on the web at the w's.100x.ly. I'm Peter Lowe. Hey, here's to a life well lived. We'll see you around. And cut. <laughs> uh, but I do hope that that has been helpful. I hope you feel the heart and, and really what, you know, just to discuss this into your own group settings and what that looks like. Over to you, Dan. Hey, that was exceptional, mate. We are. Uh... We'll let everyone, I think, uh, go off into their groups. But I did, did just want to take a moment and say, gosh, you're, uh, yeah, you're one of a kind, mate. That was so, so good. I, it was muted here, but you got a big round of applause as you finished. Oh, and uh, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure that would be felt everywhere. So please put, put some uh, encouragement to Pete in the chat if that blessed you. Uh, yeah, look forward to uh, – Pete, let's do a phone call later today. Look forward to uh, – yeah, I took so many notes, mate, and got so much uh, great feedback. So thank you. Appreciate you all. Uh, by the way, just to mention, uh, those of you that are meeting in groups, if maybe there are, I know there's a few groups coming together for the first time, now would be a great time to discuss when you'd like to get together. I know there's certain people in groups meeting that they want to do something every week. Well, possibly there's other people in that group with you that would be like-minded in that. You're welcome to do that. You have our full permission to go for it. You can meet as regularly as you want. 
Uh, we're going to be doing this, offering this in this format once a month and accompanying worksheets so groups can meet between that to get together and, and whatnot. Anyway, we've already explained all that, but uh, yeah, whatever we can do to help. Uh, Pete, appreciate you, mate. Lots of love, everyone. We'll keep the link open for any of the online crew. I know Anne's with maybe some of the team, if you're able to stick around, Mel and 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 some of the guys, Mel and Mal, and some of the guys might assist in that. Um, Andrew as well, of course. But uh, bless you guys. Just We're gonna super quick, Dan. Yeah. I just just okay. quickly like um, this is this group. I um, this time I'm praying. I'm praying for a prophetic word. Um, and whether this is for someone individually or for a couple people. And um, I just had a picture of um, a lady, and you've got great esteem. Like people look up to you already. Um, and you're already a leader. And um, if anyone would espouse the values of living a life of multiplication, everyone, so many people turn to you already. You know, you're already a person of, of noble character. But there's, when you sit on this piece, there's a part where you actually know that you've been holding back. And God's not judging you on this. He's lovingly calling you to a greater destiny. Um, and then maybe there's been a loop that you've been holding on for a little bit long. So I just had this sense that there's someone there of great esteem, either looking at this live or on a recording with great esteem already. But when you have been hearing this, you've gone, dear God, forgive me for not living a life of multiplication. And I just want to encourage you. It's not with judgment. It's with great excitement that God wants to cheer you on. Amen. Love it, Pete. Hey, I'm sure that was well received by by definitely uh, someone, but hopefully a number of people too. Uh, awesome. Love it. All right, be blessed everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch. We're gonna jump back into the room here. So take care.